Welcome everybody! To celebrate the official release of Hunt Showdown, I decided to put together a new video for the guide playlist. I present to you 100 tips for Hunt Showdown. These 100 tips are aimed at new players, but hopefully the veterans can learn one or two things as well. This video was recorded during the 1.0 release for Hunt Showdown, so keep in mind that some things might not be viable anymore if you watch this video a few patches later. Furthermore, this video includes some playstyle tips as well, which obviously reflect only my personal opinion. Additionally, these tips and tricks will not cover how to kill bosses, since I plan on doing this in upcoming videos. Depending on how much you like this video, I will make another one. Let's go! Number 1. Spawn of dog kennels and chicken coops. If you want to enter a compound quietly, it's always good to know if the dog kennels and chicken coops are empty. If they are red, you will find dogs and chickens. If they are grey, they will be empty. Number 2. Clearing dog hounds and chicken coops. You can clear these pesky audio traps by tossing a lantern inside. You must aim at the center of the kennel though, otherwise some of the animals survive and they start to alert everybody in your proximity. I suggest turning off the lantern and breaking the lamp above the kennel. You can also use decoys or throwing knives to break the lamp. Number 3. Relieving horses of their pain. The vulnerable part of the dying horse is the head. Small caliber weapons do not kill it with a single body shot, so they will alert everybody around you. High damage weapons, such as a crossbow, can put the horse down with a single shot no matter where you hit it. Throwing knives are a good way to kill them quietly, but you need to aim for the head. Number 4. Horses and lanterns. You can also burn them, this is A. Insanely cruel, you sick bastard, and B. They survive long enough to alert enemies around you. Turn off the lamp and toss it at the head and put it out of its misery. Basically, a throwing knife for free. Number 5. Sealed slash broken clues. The surface of a clue is sealed where nobody else took it yet. If you find a clue with a broken seal, you know people were here. Number 6. Red glowing clues. What does that mean? If other hunters are close by, the clues will glow red and you will also get an audio warning. This works only as long as you didn't find the boss yet, the bosses aren't banished and you didn't pick up the clue yet. Number 7. Red glowing clues. Range. The trigger range for the red glowing clue is 30 to 31 meters. Here you can see how far it actually is. Number 8. Crows. Fly path. Crows will always fly away from the source that triggered them. This way you can predict the movement of enemy hunters. Number 9. Crows as decoys. You can use the crows also as a feint. Triggering them on purpose and letting them fly in the opposite direction from where you're going can bamboozle enemy hunters. This is nice when you know you're being chased and want to make your pursuers think people are coming their way. Number 10. Headshot sound effect. Headshots have a unique sound effect. Here are three body shots. And here are three headshots. You can clearly hear the difference. Number 11. Open barricaded doors by shooting. Barricaded doors can be opened by shooting the bar behind it. This does not work from the front because... reasons. Number 12. Open barricaded doors by hand. This sounds weird, but some barricaded doors can be used by hand from outside. Flawless design. Number 13. Destroying doors efficiently. Doors can be destroyed depending on how much damage you deal to them. You can destroy them by shooting, by smashing them and by blowing them up. The most efficient way to break them are the open world melee weapons, which you can find easily. Number 14. Cripple enemies. Grunts and armors can be crippled to slow them down. Number 15. Open doors quietly. If you stand and open doors, you open them rather loudly. If you crouch and open doors, you open them relatively quiet, but also slower. Number 16. Open doors quickly. A nice punch opens doors quickly. This can matter when you try to enter buildings while being under fire. Number 17. Butcher death animation. When a butcher dies, he makes most of the time a final swing. That swing deals full damage and can kill you if you don't pay attention. 
be careful. This swing has a lot of range and will hit you even when you're standing at the side. Come here, big boy. Not even close. Oh my god. Wait, he's doing... Wait, I was on the side. Did you increase the swing thing on that thing? <laughs> I'm not gonna respond to that. No, seriously. It's an honest question now. I was standing on there the was, side. There was there was zero change in this okay. particular mechanic in the last then, year, then, Mike. Then it's a good loop. This is, to this is totally no, it's fine, on it's you. Fine, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Nobody fucking saw that. And it's all easy. I was like standing on the side because I know he's doing it. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm safe here. And he just bitch slaps me into an... Okay, no. It's okay. Number 18, meat hatch death animation. Same goes for the meat hatch. The swing from his death animation deals full damage and can hurt you pretty badly. Number 19, Meathead Damage Times. Meatheads deal different amounts of damage based on the weapon they have equipped. For example, the hook deals less and doesn't apply bleeding, the side deals way more damage and applies bleeding. Number 20, Quick Reloads. The Mosin, the Dodge, and the Bornheim, the regular one, use stripper clips to reload. This saves you a lot of time in combat. The moment you have only one bullet left, or your weapon is completely empty, your hunter performs the stripper clip reload animation. In every other case, he reloads bullet for bullet. Be careful, if you have bullet grubber, the weapon must be completely empty, otherwise this doesn't work. Furthermore, this doesn't work with the sniper Mosin, since the scope is blocking the stripper clip. Number 21, silencers have no muscle flash. Well, silencers have no muscle flesh. Enough said. Number 22, dropping gates. You can drop these metal gates by inflicting a single point of damage to them. This can be useful if you're running away from this. Run through these gates and then drop the gates behind you. This can give you some extra seconds to retreat, just don't get trapped inside them. Alternatively, use it to block enemies from leaving. And now a few Immolator tips, since it seems like a lot of people struggle with them. Number 23, Immolator Blunt Damage. Immolators don't explode if you attack them with blunt damage attacks. The stop of your rifle, the dusters, or a sledgehammer work perfectly against them. The moment you pierce their skin, they ignite. Number 24, Immolator Burn Home. You can trigger the explosion, keep your distance, and he will automatically die after half a minute. Number 25, Immolator Deep Water. Immolators don't ignite in deep water, you can finish them off with whatever weapon you want. If they are on fire while entering deep water, the flames will go out. Number 26, Immolator Melee Attack. The timing for melee attacks is crucial against Immolators. For the Dusters, the perfect combination is Heavy, Heavy, Light and Heavy Attack. If you attack as fast as possible, the second Heavy Attack is not staggering. You can of course wait a bit with your second Heavy Attack, but why should you take more time than necessary to kill that fanatic? Number 27, Immolator 1 hit. I already mentioned the Sledgehammer, but I can't stress this too much. The Charged Sledgehammer 1 hits Immolators. Pretty neat. Number 28, Damage on Teammates. The damage you deal on teammates is reduced. Don't get me wrong, you can still kill them, but this is not Rainbow Six or Escape from Tampa. Number 29, Explosive Damage on Teammates. The reduced team damage doesn't work with explosives, such as dynamites and hellfire bombs, and weapons that use explosives, such as the explosive crossbow. So be careful with that stuff. Number 30, Hunter Hitboxes. Hunters have five different hitboxes. The legs, the arms, the lower torso, the upper torso, and the head. Depending on which zone you hit, a different multiplier gets applied to your damage. 
Number 31, map size. Both maps are 1 km by 1 km. Why does this matter, you might wonder? Number 32, Dark Vision Boost Range. Because the Dark Vision Boost Range is 150 meters, with that knowledge, you know where you must position yourself to not get detected by the bounty carriers. Number 33, Gunshots on the map. Keep in mind that pulling the trigger will give away your position. Every gunshot from non-silenced weapons can be heard across the whole map. Even the Derringer can be heard quite far. Only shoot if you absolutely have to or if you want to attract players. Number 34, Water Devils force these spawn. Water Devils spawn in packs. You only need to kill one though to open a safe passage. The other devils will despawn if you get close. This time window is pretty short though, they will come back rather quickly with 1.0. Number 35, killing ducks. You don't need bug shots to go duck hunting. A lantern works just as well. The trick is to directly hit one of the little pests and then the whole flock of ducks dies. Number 36, used ammo boxes slash medkits. Check the ammo boxes and medkits that you can find in the world. Used once, the boxes are half open. Used twice, they are completely open and empty. Medkits have two medical supply sets in them. Used once, one of them will be gone. Used twice, the medkit will be completely empty and it actually closes. Number 37, Bear Trap Spawns. Bear Traps will never spawn armed, they always spawn unarmed. If you find an armed trap, you know a player was here. Number 38, Bear Traps and Wire Traps. You can combo your traps, you can place two Bear Traps into one trip mine. You have to place the trip mine first, since you can't place the trip mine over Bear Traps. Number 39, bullet drop. There is no bullet drop in Hunt Showdown. Number 40, bullet damage drop. There's however bullet damage drop. The further away you target, the more power your shot will lose. Here for example is a damage drop for the crossbow bolt. I got the data by shooting a friend. There are, as for now, no official damage drop-off charts, so keep in mind that this one right here is not 100% accurate. Number 41, bullet travel time. Hunt Showdown has no hit scan as Rainbow Six, for example. The moment you pull the trigger, the game creates an object and it travels towards your target. Depending on the velocity of the bullet, you must lead accordingly in front of your target. Number 42, boss aggro. If you get too close or make too much noise around the boss you will trigger the alert state of the boss. The boss becomes way more active, louder, runs through the boss lair and so on. If you reach the boss lair and the boss is already in the alert phase, be careful. People were here and might still be around. Here an example. First, the normal state of the boss. And now the alert state. Number 43, Poison and Healing. Keep in mind that if you're poisoned, you can't use any healing items. However, you will be healed to full health, even while being poisoned, if you banish a boss. Number 44, Aim Punch. If you get hit, your aim moves upwards, simulating the impact from the shot. That's called Aim Punch. This can become a real bummer. Your crosser is spot on, but your opponent shoots you exactly the moment you pull the trigger, your shot will miss. Number 45, Flash Bomb Damage. The flash bomb deals exactly one point of damage, and no, you don't have to hit your enemy with the flash bomb directly. As long as you flash him, he will suffer one point of damage. This is pretty nice if you play with the sparks. Why? Because the sparks deals 149 damage to the upper body, if there is no damage drop off, but the damage drop off for the sparks starts pretty late. The moment the damage drop off of the sparks becomes an issue, your target is too far away to get hit by a flash bomb anyway. Number 46, throwing knives and stamina. You can toss throwing knives without stamina. This is pretty handy to get rid of a huge group of grunts. Just keep in mind that you don't stagger AI with throwing knives compared to the normal knife.
Number 47, disarming grunts. Shooting their armor for grunt lets it drop its weapon. Number 48, leech XP. If you're farming experience points and you're hunting some meatheads, keep in mind that you only get experience points for the leeches if you actually kill them. Just killing the meathead, which lets the leeches despawn, will not give you any experience. A good lantern toss gives you a bit of extra experience. Number 49, blocking extractions. A team is at the extraction point, you can block the extraction by getting close enough. Number 50, extraction timers. The timer of the extraction will reset once you have blocked the extraction. This means you charge forward, block the extraction, you fall back again, wait around 15 seconds, charge back in, block the extraction, etc. This is neat if you have to block extracting shotgun players and you only have a rifle and don't want to stay too close for too long. Number 51, downed allies in the extraction zone. If your teammate is downed in the extraction zone, you can't leave. You must pick him up before you can leave. This also means that if you nail one player of the extracting team, his teammate can't leave. The timer automatically stops. Number 52, staying in the extraction zone. The moment a team extraction starts, only one player must stay in the extraction zone. This can save your life since you can fall back even further if you get injured. This mechanic might look stupid at first, but in the old days, both players had to stay in the extraction zone, resulting in random troll teammates running out of the extraction zone, running back in, running out, running back in. I think you get the point. Number 53, alert sounds in the extraction zone. If the horses are nervous or the engine of the boat is running, you're not alone at the extraction point. An enemy is really close. Number 54, map timer. Once the map timer runs out, your hunter is assumed lost and therefore is dead. Number 55, timer runs out in the extraction zone. However, once you reach the extraction zone, even if it is at the last second, your hunter will be saved. Number 56, enemy pop-ins. If you see AI popping in, you can be pretty sure that you're the first in this area. The game only loads AI into the game if people are close to save server resources. Number 57, meathead crow trigger. This has one not so pretty side effect. A meathead that spawns in can trigger crows. So if you get close to a compound and see crows flying away, check if a meathead is at that particular spawn. This only applies for the meathead. Number 58, Lantern Pickup. If you pick up a lantern, it is always turned on. Number 59, Getting rid of Sticky Bombs. If you should ever get hit by a Sticky Bomb, stay cool. With the Stop Bleeding interaction, you pull the Sticky Bomb out of your Hunter. It drops to the ground where the animation finished. Get immediately away from there. Number 60, like, Airbomb uh, Consumables. Once a consumable leaves the hand of a there. Hunter, it is okay. an object you can shoot. You can shoot a dynamite that gets cooked in the hand. Once the consumable is tossed, you can shoot it. They can even collide mid-air. Always nice to kill yourself and the enemy by his hellfire bomb colliding with your dynamite bottle. Number 61, aim helper turning red. If the aim helper turns red, you are in blast range of your consumable. Number 62, retreating aim helper. If you cook an explosive, the aim helper starts retreating shortly before detonating in your hand. This is the utmost last moment to toss your consumable. Number 63, noise in general. Everything can be heard. Everything in Hunt Showdown can be heard. Switching weapons, charging a melee attack, reloading your weapons, bandaging, using a vitality shot. Keep this in mind. If you can hear it, the enemy can hear it. For example, charge your melee weapon early enough to not be hurt by the enemy before you attack. Number 64, different stages of audio traps. Horses, crows, ducks, chickens and dogs have different threat levels. If you get too close, they get nervous and you can see and hear this. If you ignore this warning and continue with whatever you're doing, you will set off the audio trap. If you're moving really quickly, they skip the alert state and go off immediately. Number 65, war banks. Wood. Bullets and pellets can penetrate wood. It depends heavily on the type of weapon and the distance of the obstacle. 
Keep in mind that crossbow bolts accept the shot bolt. And bomb lance harpoons can penetrate anything. Number 66, Warbanks, Metal. The only weapons strong enough to penetrate metal sheets and metal roots are long range ammunition weapons and the nitro. Again, the type of weapon and the distance of the obstacle play a huge role. The uppercut has no problem to penetrate a metal sheet at close range. It will fail though at long range where the sparks yep. will have no problem at all. I got oh a hit my marker. god, he's right here. Yeah, he's dead, he's dead. Could you know from dead. where I shot him? I was right here, at the corner, coming around like this, <laughs> and then you shot him. Number 67, leaving the map. You can leave the map anytime you want. If you took a beating or don't think you can win a fight and want to leave, you can do so at any point of the match. Just get to one of the extractions. Number 68, different stances, different sound intensity. Running is insanely loud, walking can be heard close by, and crouch walking is very quiet, but not silent. Number 69, crouching and chains, bottles, hooks, and so on. If you're crouching, you will make no sound while passing through hanging bottles, chains, or hooks. Number 70, different stances, different crosshair bloom. If you hip fire, your stance will influence your crosshair bloom significantly. Holding still and crouching gives you the tightest spread of your crosshair. Walking and shooting gives you the biggest spread of your crosshair. This is especially important if you use pistols with fanning. Number 71. Shotguns and stances. Tip 70 doesn't apply to shotguns. You can jump, run around, whatever. The spread of your pellets will not be affected. Which makes sense. Why should the pellets spread differently just because you crouch? So running and gunning is legit for shotguns. Furthermore, aiming on sights doesn't affect the spread either. Number 72, clearing ravens. There are different ways to get rid of ravens. You can use a lantern, which can be hurt but not that far, and enemies can see in which direction they are flying. You can kill them quietly with a poison bomb, although this is a bit of an expensive method. Trading a consumable to get rid of one flock of crows? You can of course blow them up, for example, with the explosive crossbow. This is very loud, but doesn't give away in which direction you are moving. So if you're triggering them anyway, burning them or blowing them up is a good way to deal with them. There are even more ways to deal with them, get creative and find them out. Number 73, compounds with double clues. Certain compounds have two clues. If you're lucky, you can pick up both. On Lost in Delta, The Lost in Station, Nichols Prison and Fort Karmic have two clue spawns. On the Bayou map, the areas Blanchet Graves, Pont Rica and Healing Waters Church have two clue spawns. This means targeting these compounds might get you faster to the boss location. Number 74, releasing ladders. If you need to let go of a ladder quickly, hit your jump hotkey. The hunter will release the ladder immediately. Number 75, Movement Airborne. You can move your hunter mid-air. If you see a trap at the bottom of a ladder, you can take a few steps down, release the ladder and maneuver around the trap. Number 76, Switch Weapons for Ammunition. If you're running low on ammunition after a gunfight, you can trade weapons of the same ammo type to get some spare ammo. Number 77, Dynamites and Smokescreen. To cover revives, you can sacrifice dynamites to create a smoke screen. This doesn't work too good, to be honest. Outside, during daytime, this will not work against good hunters. But inside buildings, it works kind of reliably. You can create a smoke screen in doorways, for example. 
Number 78. Extinguishing fire on teammates. If a teammate is on fire, wait until the fire mountain goes out. You don't need to pick him up completely to stop the fire. A quick touch from your magical hands will stop the fire. Number 79. Contraband weapons and scopes. Contraband weapons will always have a cracked scope. You can't repair them. This means that weapons you loot from hunters and weapons that you extract from quick play mode will always have a cracked scope. Number 80. Stamina management. Learn how much stamina you need to kill specific AI with specific weapons. For example, if you kill a grunt with a rifle, you don't need two heavy melee hits. One charge attack and one light attack will kill a grunt, leaving you with more stamina. Another example is the Immolator and the Dusters. You don't need 4 heavy attacks, you need 3 heavy attacks and 1 light attack. Experiment with your arsenal and the monsters roaming around the map to get the most out of your stamina bar. Number 81. Facing while taking clues. If you take a clue, make sure to face the direction you want to observe during the animation. You can cancel the animation at any point, so if you spot a hunter aiming at you, this might save your life. Number 82. World Axe. Do not underestimate melee weapons in Hunt. They are very powerful and many of them will one hit an enemy hunter. The Rod Axe kills grunts and hives with a light attack and kills armored with a charge attack. You can also kill the hellhounds with light attacks, although this is kinda difficult. Needs a little bit of training. Therefore, the Axe is a good way to kill stuff quietly and to preserve ammunition in the process. Number 83. Count bodies. Number of max hunters per match. Keep track of how many hunters you killed and how many dead bodies you find on the map. In total there can be 12 hunters in a match. This applies for bounty hunt, teams of 2 and teams of 3 and quick play. So for every game mode. As long as you didn't kill every other hunter you should always like assume that you did something. Nice, let's go forward. There's nothing to get here. <laughs> Sick pain! Hunter? Yeah, another one. I get a heal. He's coming from the other side. I still got a heal. He had a silence in the gauntlet fanning. I have one shotgun shell left. Number 84. Move as fast as possible, but as slowly as needed. This is something that I see a lot of unexperienced hunters do, crouch walking when it's not necessary. There's one golden rule for hunt. Move as fast as possible, but as slowly as needed. Crouch walking without any reason will only make you an easy target. This is something that comes with experience. Number 85. Reading compounds and environment. Another thing that will come with experience, learn to read compounds. Are ammo boxes taken? Are medkits taken? Are there any traps? Is the red dog kennel empty? Is a barricaded door open? Is the seal of a clue broken? The list goes on and on. Check for these hints and then decide what to do next. Number 86. Throwing knives can kill grunts and hives almost silently. A throwing knife to the head will kill grunts and hives almost silently. Duh. Number 87. Prep sound for consumables. Learn to listen to the prep sound of the consumables. The wind up for the flash bomb, the finger snap for hellfire bombs, the fuse sound of dynamites, the wire sound of concertina bombs, etc. This helps you to make quick decisions regarding how to react. If you hear the wind up for a flash bomb and you expect to get fully flashed, you should already check for a path to run away and memorize it to not die easily to a push from the enemy while being flashed. Number 88. Restoring destroyed bars. There are two ways to restore or destroyed health bars. Option A is to banish a boss. A boss banish restores one big health chunk or two small health chunks. It can restore one small health chunk and one big health chunk if you have luck with the arrangement of your health bars. The banish restores 50 HP but will fill up any begun health chunk. Option B is to buy the health bars after the match. You can also push your luck by killing a boss in the next game. 
Number 89, remembering medkit locations. Even if you're at full HP, you should always remember the latest world medkits. If you lose health in your next fight, it's always good to know how far away We're the next medkit is, since they always heal 100 hit points. Number 90, how to heal properly. If you have long distance firefights, use the healing supplies wisely. Do not immediately use them. Your hunter will regenerate the damaged health bar, which means you can restore, most of the time, way more health if you are a little bit patient. You can of course do this in close to mid-range battles as well, but this has obviously the risk of getting killed by a quick push of your enemies. Number 91, tracking bounty with the map. Once other players picked up a bounty, you can track them in dark vision and by the moving lightning on the map. A quick look on the map is for me personally the way to go. Especially if you're ambushing people and don't want to give away your position, you should track the bounty with the map and never with dark vision, since enemy hunters can hear you activating the dark vision. Number 92, finishing off hunters. You can finish off hunters with fire. This will slowly destroy their health chunks. Once no health chunk is left, they can't be revived anymore. Just a fair warning, instantly burning hunters after downing them is despised by a big part of the community. So do not expect any mercy after doing this. Uh, I killed my okay? teammate Joe, killed with explosive para. <laughs> 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 Distance one meter. Nice. Oh, the barrel was a meter from you. Mm. But it's interesting that it's using the barrel, not actually you. Regarding distance. Do you want me to put you out at all? No. Okay. Look at then them I guys. Then I am leaving. Fucking toxic asshole. He asked me to do it. He had... Full capacities of the mind. Oop. Oop. Red skull. <laughs> Number 93, Tinted Glass. Tinted Glass makes it hard to spot enemies and movement behind it. As a defender, do not break the Tinted Glass. As an attacker, get rid of it immediately. Try not to shoot it though, since it will give away your position to other hunters in the proximity. Sacrifice one or two throwing knives or decoys to do so. The bounty carriers know that you are around anyway, after picking up the bounty, so don't bother about that too much. Number 94, Splitting Work. Certain boss layers leave you insanely vulnerable to rushers, if both of you fight the boss. Depending on the compound, it's smarter that one of you stays outside and operates as a scout, warning his teammate when people arrive. With teams of three, one person should always be the scout. Number 95, stopping bleeding the smart way. Do not stop the bleeding if you plan on using a medkit as words anyway. The moment you start a medkit, it will stop the bleeding. This doesn't work with vitality shots. They will stop the bleeding once they healed you, but they will not stop the bleeding the moment you start the animation. Dama 96. Stay away from horses in combat. Horses will kick you. Yes, they look innocent, but these guys can actually kick you if you stay too close for a while. Number 97. Combat Hive Swarms. If you get attacked by the insect swarm of the hive, just melee it. A rifle needs exactly two hits to get rid of it. Blunt weapons work the best. Number 98. Blowing up red and yellow barrels instantly. There are ways to trigger these barrels instantly. A flare pistol, a fusee, a firebomb, blank fire decoys and more will trigger the explosion without delay. You can do some very mean memes with them. Number 99. Insta-kill traps. Placing an alert trip mine next to a barrel will detonate the barrel immediately. You can do that at choke points that have a red barrel. This is A, one of the ultimate troll moves, and B, always nice to see additional hunter kills on your score screen. Number 100, clearing barbed wire. A concertina bomb is an effective way to block entrances. You can get rid of them by attacking the barbed wire with melee attacks. That takes a while though, and you're pretty exposed. Sometimes you meet a special breed of players who will burn and concertina bomb your teammate, making a revive in time borderline impossible. 
So how do we get rid of the barbed wire? From range, throwing knives are pretty good. Decoys do not work. What works best is an explosive. A dynamite stick is enough to clear the whole barbed wire. This seems a bit excessive at first, but in some scenarios, such as saving a teammate or the final seconds in quick play, this can come in handy. Alright, this took a while. I hope I was able to show you one or two new tricks. There are way more neat things you can do in Unshowdown, so don't be shy to experiment with your equipment and the world. Maybe I do another 100 tips and tricks in the future? Who knows? Feel free to visit me on stream, twitch.tv slash ghost if you have questions, want to discuss the game or just want to see me play. You can also join our Discord or follow various social media pages, everything is in the description below. Thank you to my patrons for supporting our project. I hope I can count on your amazing support in the future. Also, a special thank you to Joker for helping with the captions and another special thank you to Joe for some proofreading and another special thank you for Toby for helping with the teammate clips. Sorry, man. Feel free to check out my other content. Maybe you'll find something you like. A thumbs up would be appreciated and sharing the video with your friends would be quite nice as well. i see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye-bye.